Hey guys! So, about two weeks ago, at least about two weeks ago as the date I'm recording this video, Apple just released their spring event for 2021, and today I'm going to be telling you my opinions and a pretty okay summary of the Apple event. Also, to all the new viewers on my channel, if you're wondering why I'm talking about my opinions on the Apple event, well, if you look at the brand new shelf I just got, then yes, I'm a really big Apple fanboy. Anyways, let's get to the video. So, first thing to get out of the way, nice intro video, Apple. But usually Apple always does good intro videos for digital events, so yeah. Second, anyone a fan of Apple Podcasts and Apple Music? Well, Apple redesigned the UI of Apple Podcasts to look like the Apple Music UI. Yay! Honestly, I only use Apple Podcasts to watch replays of older Apple events, so I don't really use Apple Podcasts on a daily basis, unlike Apple Music. But for the people who do, then I guess good for you? Next thing. In my opinion, I feel like Apple should have released this when the product launched, but... Apple announced a new color for the iPhone 12, and the color is... Mmm, purple. The reason why I said Apple should have released this color when the iPhone 12 launched, it's because when the iPhone 11 launched, it came with a purple color on release day. But when the iPhone 12 launched, it didn't come with a purple color on release day. And instead, Apple just released it later on. I mean, it's not a huge deal. It just kind of puzzles me why Apple wouldn't release it on release day. But otherwise, I think the purple color is pretty nice. It's almost as better as the product red color. But if you watch most of my YouTube videos, then you'll know that product red will always win over any other color. Just saying. Next, this is the first new product Apple released for 2021. So, have you ever lost your keys before? You probably have. So, Apple introduced the AirTag. What does it do? You basically put it on your keychain or a bag or luggage, as Apple demonstrates in the video. You can also put it in your stuffed animal. Okay. And the next time you lose your keys, you can use the Find My app to track it. And that way, you'll probably never lose your keys again. It also comes in a variety of cases, which is pretty neat. And you guys probably expected this, but I think the product red one is the coolest. Next thing. Apple finally refreshed their Apple TV 4K! It's about time they refresh it after like four years. Anyway, what's the upgrade? Now, the new Apple TV 4K has the A12 Bionic chip, rather than the A10X Fusion chip from the 2017 Apple TV 4K. So now, with the new A12 Bionic chip, you can now watch Dolby Vision video at 60 FPS rather than 30 FPS for a much smoother frame rate. And if you have an iPhone 12 Pro or iPhone 12 Pro Max, you can already shoot Dolby Vision video at 60 FPS. Which is literally overkill for a phone camera. Like, the original iPhone couldn't even take videos. So now, when you airplay to your new Apple TV 4K, you get the true Dolby Vision 60 FPS video on a TV. Oh, and Apple also released a new Siri remote for the new Apple TV 4K. My thoughts on it? I hate it. It literally looks like a third gen Apple TV remote knockoff, or as Apple so calls, an Apple remote. Like, since the front of the remote has a raw silver aluminum design, it just doesn't blend in well with the black Apple TV 4K. Also, now that there's a click wheel instead of a touchpad for navigation, the whole remote just looks cluttered with way too many buttons. I mean, at least there's a new mute button, which is pretty helpful when you want to mute the TV volume really quickly, and at least there's a new power button, which lets you turn on and off the TV. But you could already turn on the TV just by pressing the menu button on the old Siri remote, so I don't really see a purpose of adding a power button. So, one last complaint. Why did they move the Siri button to the side? I've already just gotten so used to pressing the Siri button on the front of the old Siri remote, but of course, Apple just had to move it to the side. 
Maybe it's because there's already too many buttons on the front anyway. I mean, at least you can use the click wheel as a touchpad like the old Siri remote, and at least you can use the touchpad as a jaw control for video scrubbing, but... Man, this remote is just ugly. Wow, that segment went way longer than I anticipated, but the remote is just ugly! Anyways, the iMac. It's pretty cool. It's a really powerful computer with a really high resolution display, and it's had the same design ever since 2007, so it's very Steve Jobs-like. But is it still very Steve Jobs-like, even though it was introduced in 2012? Hmm. But now, with the new M1 chip, the iMac needed an actual refresh. So, introducing the new iMac G3. I, I mean, uh, the new M1 iMac. When I first saw the M1 iMac, something just felt wrong about it. I mean, again, this isn't the first time Apple has done something like this offering a Mac in a variety of colors, but usually today, Apple mostly only offers their Macs in silver and space gray, plus a gold color for the MacBook Air. So it's pretty crazy that Apple would do something like this again. But hey, I'm not complaining. At least we now have a product right iMac with the M1 chip. Anyways, the new iMac has tons of new features and a completely new design. It's almost so different that it might not even look like an iMac. At first, I actually thought the M1 iMac was a colorful iPad Pro. One of the new features of the new iMac is that with the M1 chip, your apps literally load like the second you click them. Like, just look at this. It's like insane. Like, when I open an app on my 2018 13-inch MacBook Pro, keep in mind, with the Intel chip, it takes... Not too long, but compared to the event, oh yeah, it takes a long time. Another upgrade is the new speakers. What Apple calls a six speaker system is apparently the best sound system ever in a Mac. So with the improved speakers on the new iMac, you know that Apple bumped up the mics too. Now with the new mics, it reduces the noise coming out of the fans so your voice will sound much more clear. And Again, it's apparently the best mic system ever in a Mac. So great job, Apple, for the speakers and mics. This next feature is something I thought Apple would never do, but they finally did. Now, with the new Magic Keyboard that comes with the new iMac, it has a, you're not gonna believe this, a Touch ID sensor built in. I love this new feature because with my 2018 MacBook Pro and my Logitech keyboard, if my Apple Watch couldn't unlock my Mac for some reason, then I would have to bend all the way over, sit up, and unlock. But if I had that new keyboard, I would just go, boom, touch ID. I've always wondered why Macs always had a 720p webcam instead of Oh, well, you know, a 1080p webcam. But then when I actually did research for this video, I found out that the 27-inch iMac, keep in mind, that came up before the new 24-inch iMac with Apple Silicon, it had a 1080p webcam. This is what happens when you don't research. Well, with the new iMac, it has a, again, you're not going to guess it, a 1080p FaceTime HD camera. Honestly, I thought Apple would never add a 1080p camera to their Macs, but they actually did. If I had that new iMac, my webcam for my Twitch streams would look a lot more clear. I have a 2018 MacBook Pro, I'm not upgrading anytime soon. Also, with these new colorful iMacs, you know that Apple made some color matching magic mouses and magic trackpads, and they're pretty cool. But I don't think I'm going to be upgrading to the new Magic Mouse because one, my Space Gray Magic Mouse 2 works perfectly fine. There's just no need to upgrade. And two, the Product Red Magic Mouse has a white top and a red aluminum color. I obviously love the red aluminum color because, well, if you couldn't already tell already, I love Product Red. But my Space Gray Magic Mouse has Space Gray aluminum but a black top. 
And that's one of the main reasons I think it's cool, because it has a black top. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to be upgrading for my old Space Gray Magic Mouse. Well, I guess that's all the highlights for the new iMac. Now, for the final thing. Day two. Like the new shirt? Anyways, back to the video. Not only does Tim Cook show you how to break into Apple headquarters, but they announced that another product was getting the Apple Silicon. Another Mac? Nope. Introducing the iPad Pro with Apple Silicon? Yup. Apple went this far at pushing that the iPad Pro was a computer. But hey, I'm not complaining. Now, with the new iPad Pro and the M1 chip, the new iPad Pro is now the fastest iPad yet! Like, for example, with the iPad Pro and the M1 chip, you can now play, yup, console quality graphic games. And you know, iPads used to play things like mobile quality games. So if this is true, then wow, good job, Apple. You really, um, you really did it this time. And if you have a DualSense controller, also known as a PS5 controller, it even takes advantage of the controller's special haptics and just... Wow. Also, the new iPad Pro now comes in a brand new two terabyte size. Okay, look, I understand having a two terabyte size for something like a MacBook because that's a desktop computer, but with an iPad, you know that the thing I just watch YouTube videos on all day, like an iPad, like who needs two terabyte iPads for an iPad? I mean, in my opinion, I feel like it's kind of absurd. I already thought one terabyte was like already enough, but I guess it's for people who have like what, a thousand 4K movies downloaded. But hey, I guess it's an option for people who really need the storage. But hey, at least with the new LiDAR scanner from the new iPhone 12 Pro and iPhone 12 Pro Max, at least you can turn your room into a disco party. So that's a feature. Anyways, now onto the actual features. The new iPad Pro screen has 10,000 mini LEDs, like, what? But you're probably wondering, what's so special about 10 million LEDs? Well, now when you're viewing HDR content on the new iPad Pro screen, they look even more lifelike than ever. Also, along with the 10,000 mini LEDs on the new iPad Pro screen, the 12.9 inch iPad Pro has a liquid XDR display. So basically, to put it short, it's basically a Pro XDR display in your pocket. Well, the iPad Pro isn't really pocketable, but uh, let's just say that it's a Pro Display XDR on the go. But here's the catch. It's like three times as thinner, so like, who needs a Pro Display XDR if you could just get a 12.9 inch iPad Pro? But to be real, it's pretty impressive that Apple got to fit the Pro Display XDR display in the thin iPad Pro design. Like, again, great job, Apple. Now, here's a pretty cool feature called Center Stage. If you're on a FaceTime call with someone else and then another person shows up in the frame, the camera will automatically pan to them when they start talking. Well, the camera doesn't really pan to them when they start talking. It's more so when they show up in the frame, but... You get the idea. Now, that is really cool. Wow, if I had the new iPad Pro, then I wouldn't need my Osmo Mobile 2 anymore. Honestly, why would I ever throw my Osmo Mobile 2? Even though I barely use it. Anyways, Thunderbolt support, the ultra-wide cameras from the iPhone 11 Pro and iPhone 11 Pro Max, 5G cellular on an iPad for some godforsaken reason, the whole suite of iPad Pro features, all coming the second half of May. Like every other product I just talked about. So, that's all the things Apple announced for their spring event. So, I'm done! Thank you guys so much for watching. Comment what was your favorite part of the Apple spring event. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in another video. Bye! Hey guys, so I just want to say before you click off, thank you so much for watching the video, and make sure you follow my Twitch to see my gaming live streams, my TikTok for my YouTube sneak peeks, and my Instagram for my YouTube shorts. You don't have to follow them, but it is much appreciated. Also, click my YouTube icon to subscribe to my channel, because it really helps out. And click the video on the left to see my most recent video, and click the video on the right to see my previous video. Anyways, I hope you have a good day. Bye!